Okay, I'm, I'm Dr. Brett Lemire, and today we're going to talk about corrective exercise strategies to look at some of the findings that we saw with the functional movement screen that we discussed. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is the uh, posture and uh, how we assess posture in both athletes and in, in professionals. Okay, so I'll have uh, Brian come up here and so basically what we want to see is four corners that are symmetrical so the four corners are the shoulders and the hips uh, down the middle we want to see the chin sternum and zipper line bisect those four corners okay and from the side what we want to see is the gravity line where the head back of the head middle back and the tailbone align themselves. So we'll be looking at those four corners as we do a functional movement screen and just see how an individual will react to the uh, particular screen. Then when we select a corrective exercise, we want to make sure that uh, we're seeing the ability for the uh, athlete or the professional to hold a particular position with good stability and good mobility. All right, one of the uh, first corrective exercises that we're going to do is, is the waiter's bow. And it's a, it's a simple exercise that you can do throughout the day to address uh, tightness and weakness in the superficial back line, the muscles that run along the back side of the body. Uh, typically, we see uh, this posture where the head is forward and the shoulders are rounded. In the waiter's bow, what we want to do is keep the chest open in the front, interlace the fingers, lock the elbows, reach towards the heels with the hands, pack the chin in, stay nice and tall, and as we bend forward slowly, we're going to hinge only from the hips. Good. And see how you have a nice flat back? And can you feel the stretch in the hamstrings? Mm -hmm. Excellent, excellent. Come up nice and slow. And this time we're gonna add in some deep breathing. So let's deep breathe, hold that position right there. Good, go ahead, breathe out. Good. And you should see a nice flat line of the, of the spine. The mobility is coming from the length, uh, stretching of the hamstrings and uh, the axis of motion is in the hips, not in the spine. What I'd like to do is just show you what we do not wanna see uh, which is a faulty pattern. You'll see Brian, he'll break uh, posture about halfway through by rounding the shoulders in the back. Go ahead. And you can see here now he's rounded and he's picking up a little bit of spine stress and flexion uh, and so we would not want to see that. So let's do one more correct. Good, nice and tall. Excellent, deep breathing. Stick the butt back through the hands, nice flat back, good length in the hamstring, weight on the heels, perfect. And that's your waiter's bow. Okay, uh, the next corrective we're gonna talk about is, is one of the, uh, uh, what we call the Mac Daddies of, of uh, limbering correctives. And it's the bretzel. The bretzel should be done uh, on, a, on a daily, uh, basis as a movement prep or what we call a standard operating procedure uh, which implies that y you know you would uh, you're preparing your body for for the day or for the shift so the bretzel we start the bretzel with a double knee to chest and Brian's doing a good job here he's gonna deep breathe through his nose uh, he's gonna get about three to five breaths in nice and deep and when he's ready, uh, since he's gonna go to the left, he's gonna straighten his left leg, keep that right knee packed to the chest. Good, when he's ready now, he's gonna put the right arm out, bring the right leg over. Good, then he's gonna grab the bottom foot. And here, he's doing a great job of keeping the knee in line with the hip and in line with the spine. So he's got a nice long axis here. Uh, the shoulder is back, doesn't need to touch the, the ground, but it needs to be close. You can see he's deep breathing through his abdomen right here. Good, and let's add in a little bit of neck rotation to the right. You feel a little bit of stretch there, Brian? Yeah. Yeah, very good. A couple deep breaths. All right, let's come out of that nice and slow and go back into a double knee to chest. 
Still breathing deep. Good, excellent. And let's go ahead and straighten the right leg. Good. All right, when you're ready, go ahead and bring it across at 90 degrees. Excellent job. Secure the knee to the ground. Bring the foot up. Good. Excellent. Good. Bring this knee back just a bit. There. That feel a little better? Okay, good. Deep breathe. Good. And when we see the deep breathing in the stretch, you can see he's breathing into his lower abdomen, which is activating the core and giving a better stretch across the chest and into the rib cage. All right, let's roll to the back. Good. And now let's just kind of rock side to side nice and gently. Good. Good. There's a little T drill right there. Excellent. Good. All right, back to start position, double knee chest. Good, and relax. So the, the bristle, and, and Brian added in a little bit of T-drill, is, is, is uh, also an excellent uh, set of exercises for limbering up the entire body. That, that, that really covers a lot of the, the hip, trunk, chest, neck. Attention, all growth station crew. <laughs> and uh, Brian. Okay, so the next uh, corrective exercise we're going to talk about is the peel off press. Uh, we're going to do this from the half kneeling position. Uh, it's similar to a lunge position. And we're, we're going to do is have the resistance uh, offset from the body uh, at 90 degrees. And so what Dr. Patterson is going to do is grab uh, the handle with both hands. He's going to pull the tube to the chin, sternum, and zipper line right in the center of the body. And he's just going to bring the handles in and out. At the same time, he is activating his core, keeping his abdominals braced, breathing through his nose. And you notice that there is no wiggle in the chin, sternum, and zipper line. So as that load is trying to rotate his body to the right, he has to resist that uh, rotatory force. So this is an excellent exercise for improving core stabilization. And repeat that on the opposite side. And again, that's called a pell-off press, P-A-L-L-O-F. <laughs> Are we good? <laughs> Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. All right. What we're going to talk about now is strengthening the back line. I'm going to turn Brett, Dr. Brett here like this. Universally in our uh, clinic, we see what we call a back line weakness. It can be mom and dad America. We see it in a lot of our athletes. We see it in firefighters, police officers, guys who work physically. Part of the reason for that is that we sit way more than we used to, so that actually shuts down. When I talk about the back line, I'm talking about the back muscles, the glutes, hips, and the hamstrings. We very often see a weakness there. That can be very dangerous, particularly for a fighter, firefighter, because, and we'll often see that one side is weaker than the other, so we'll see this imbalance. So if you're in a situation where you're having to have one leg forward, that happens to be your weak side, you're trying to pull someone out from beside a toilet or whatever the case is, chances of hurting the hip, glute, uh, low back, shearing through that because of the collapse is very, very common. Um, so we're going to show you how we correct that. And it's called, and in my, for my money, I think it's one of the best exercises that you can, you can do because it's going to involve the back line, but it's also going to involve the core. It challenges balance. It challenges flexibility and power all at the same time. And there's very few exercises that do that. So that's why I, uh, I really like this exercise. So Brett's going to demonstrate how we do this. He's going to come up into a runner's position. Then he's going to drive that leg back. As he does that, he's going to bend forward like he has weights in his hand. But you'll notice the key to this is keeping the back straight. I want you to slump, Brett, like you're going to try and touch it. Yeah, you don't want to drop your shoulders and arms to try and get to the floor. You want to keep a straight back like that, otherwise you're going to hurt yourself. So a straight line here. Notice the knees bent a little bit. You can do that. Uh, as you get better at this, you can lock the knee out. But for now, you want the knee a little bit bent. Now, the key to this exercise is to not just drop the leg and stand up, it's to drive forward through this hip because the glute, 
back line and hip are designed to extend uh, the hip. And so that's why rather than just dropping the leg, we're going to come forward into the runner stance. So I'm going to have Brett do that one more time. One of the mistakes I see is that people don't, whoop, you okay? Yeah. Now, what's nice about this is you can see that this challenges your balance when you don't have any weight in your hand. And that's what I love about this exercise because it will improve your balance also. So Brett's going to do that again. He's going to drive that leg back. One of the things that I see universally too is that um, on this exercise, they don't drive the leg far enough back. Okay, so I start, I start to see this sort of thing where the leg's here and they're rounding through the back. So, okay, let's do that again. And you can see this exercise is a challenge. So that's a great form right there. He's going to get the leg back up and then he's going to drive through this hip. Now, you're going to experience the same thing when you start this exercise is that your balance is going to be the biggest challenge that you have with this exercise. Be okay with that. That's why we do it body weight until your balance gets a little bit better and your form gets a little bit better. And obviously as you do this, uh, you'll get better at it. Your mechanoreceptors, your nervous system will pick this up. There you go. Now, once you're comfortable with that and you're able to do a couple sets of 10 of that, then we can add weight. Okay. okay. So um, you will actually find that your balance will be a little bit better uh, with the weights in your hand. It doesn't take a lot of weight when you first start. I remember when I first learned this exercise, I thought I was all that in a bag of chips and <laughs> I, uh, I did it with 40 pounds. I did two sets of 10 and I could barely walk for four days. So it's a very, very powerful exercise. So start out with a weight, maybe 10 pounds just to get used to the exercise. But same thing, you're going to start in this position. Same thing, we're going to go over, back straight, drive that leg back and then power through the hip to finish the exercise. Now, as you get good at that, we want to take it to another level. You're going to hold the weight in one hand. Obviously what that's going to do is torque your torso this way, which means you have to use stabilizers and core to get through the exercise. And all the mechanics are the same. Leg comes up, we drive back, do not do this. This is about the range of motion I can get right now with my flexibility. Don't do this. Don't drop the weight and round your back to try and get to the ground. You'll hurt yourself. And again, you'll drive up through like this. Now, switch hands. Same leg. Now, my body's being pulled in an opposite direction. I'm having to use opposite, opposite stabilizers, opposite erector spinae in the back in order to facilitate it. So looks exactly the same, same leg, drive back and drive through the hip. And I'll guarantee you when you start to get into 10 reps or so of this, you'll feel the difference between holding on the right, holding on the left. Fantastic exercise. Uh, I have all my patients do it at some level in order to increase their ability, their back line. Is there any um, instruction on the, on the repetitions? So, beginner? great question. So we start out typically with one set of 10, and you can work up to two to three sets of 10. Yeah. When we were doing the functional testing with a lot of the firefighters, almost universally we saw that there was uh, mobility issues with the shoulder and the upper T-spine. And this is a very, very common um, problem, we, again, with most of our patients that gets missed many times, unfortunately. So what I want to demonstrate here um, is a shoulder mobility thoracic mobility exercise that I do personally. Uh, for my shoulders, I've injured both rotator cuffs and probably this has helped me more than uh, any exercise I've done. So in our clinic, we have sticks like this. We have them for two reasons and that's to beat non-compliant patients and also to do exercise. Can I throw humor in like that? And to uh, <laughs> do exercises. So you're gonna need a stick and uh, some wall space with this one. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna get back up against the wall as much as you're able to, depending on your body uh, type, you want to try and get your heels, obviously the hips, and the head back on the wall. You're going to grab the stick with an overhead uh, hand position. Now the key to this is to start out fairly wide. And that, you know, you'll kind of figure out where that is for you. But you want to comfortably, I mean, you don't want to be ridiculously wide. But you want to be probably, you know, a foot out each side of the hips. Head's going to go back against. Now the key to this is as you come up like this, which is what I'm going to do, I'm going to come up and I'm going to touch the wall. 
The key to this is that I'm not bending the elbow. Can you get that in? So, as you come up, here's what I see with a lot of patients. They'll get to here, that's the limit of their shoulder mobility, so they'll bend their elbows and come back to the wall like that. And that's not what we're looking for. So again, you'll be down. And here's the other thing. If you can only get to there, that's fine. Don't worry about it. I'm gonna move over a little bit. You'll get to here, put a little bit of a stretch into it, keep the head back, make sure your hips are not coming off the wall, and then come back down. Take a little tension off, then go back up. If that's as far as you can go, great. If you can get all the way to the wall, you'll do that and come back down. Now, what I do to challenge myself a little is I'll do maybe four or five like that, then I'll come in a little bit, maybe six inches or so on each side, and I'll go through that again. And it's a little bit tougher. And I'll continue, you know, I'll do four or five of those, and I'll continue to come in until I get to a point where I can't reach the wall. Okay? And then I'm, I'm done with that segment of it. Then what I'll do is I'll go back out to my original position, head back, and I'll come back. Now this time, I'm going to bend the elbows, and I'm going to put my elbows and my hands against the wall with the stick resting on my head. Then I'm going to attempt to slide as far up the wall I can, as I can, keeping the hand and elbow on the wall. That's key. I don't want to see this, where the elbow comes off the wall. That's a compensation. So elbow and hand stay on the wall. Give it a good stretch, and then come down. And again, um, somewhere between 8 and 10. I'll do 5 of each one till I get to a point where I can't do any more. And then I'll do about 10 of those. Fantastic shoulder mobility, thoracic mobility exercise. This is part two. So this is part two. This is an advanced move. Uh, this is to start to uh, develop your ability to do a uh, overhead squat, which is one of the tests that we do uh, in the functional screens. So you're going to go into a squat position, obviously, back and head against the wall. And we're going to do uh, what we did on part two, the first one. We're going to go back against the wall elbow and hand against the, the wall, and then you're going to slide up as high as you can, keeping the elbow. Now you can see I've got limited motion through there, so that's something that I need to work on. Fantastic exercise again to start to groove the, uh, the deep squat, overhead squat. Okay, so part three of uh, the corrective for the deep squat pattern is going to be a more dynamic version of, of what Dr. Patterson just showed you. Uh, again, we're going to start with our feet uh, away from the wall, we're gonna sit back. We're gonna bring the bar up overhead in the first position, keeping the elbows locked, uh, arms and elbows against the wall. Deep breath in and out. <sighs> Good, and then we're gonna drop into a deep squat and hold the bar back. <sighs> and then come up. And that's the third pattern in the corrective for the deep squat series. Okay, so one of the uh, findings we found in the uh, screening of the uh, firefighters were the, uh, the, the difficulty with getting the rib cage to align with the pelvis in the front. And a lot of guys had uh, what's called a diastasis, which is a bulging or weakness of the midline of the body. To help correct that and to help improve the squat and stability in the body, we do a 90-90 overhead wall press. And so what Dr. Patterson is going to do is he's going to put the hands overhead at shoulder level, fingertips facing down, elbows facing up. He's going to breathe in, breathe out. On exhalation, he's going to allow the rib cage to drop to its lowest position. This aligns the rib cage to the pelvis. He's gonna brace his abs, tighten, don't let, me, don't let me push, tighten, tighten. Okay, breathing through the nose, he maintains that brace in the abdominal muscles. He's gonna pull one knee up to 90-90, other knee up to 90-90. He's gonna maintain pressure with his uh, hands pressing into the wall, and he'll feel activation of his abdominals uh, essentially pulling the rib cage down to the pelvis. This is an excellent exercise for improving uh, all patterns of stability in, in the body and especially correcting uh, the alignment of the chest to the pelvis. One leg down, 
Good. Add the legs down. Rest the arms. Breathe in. Breathe out. Good. And that would be one rep. And what we'd like to see on this uh, is about two minutes of work. So if it took, you know, Dr. Patterson, uh, you know, 15 seconds to work through one rep, you can see, you know, how many reps you would have to do to get up to two minutes. Okay? <clears throat> so that's the overhead wall press. Good. Good.